Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on the channel about the Vuelta España. As always, I'm joined by Mr. Critical himself, Ewan, and today we're going to be ranking the teams that have been confirmed for this Vuelta España. And Ewan, how is it going to work today? So for this ranking video, we are going back to the tier list formats. Yes, that means that we have five different categories for each team to be placed in starting with the best one a super team this is a team that's brought the best of the best in terms of gc riders and are really in a position to hold this race by the scruff of its neck second up we have the podium contenders these teams could have a shot at getting a podium and being there in the final at santiago de compostela yes we're not finishing in madrid this year let's remember thirdly in the middle we have top 10 chasers these are the teams that can really be aiming for that place in the gc ranking and also in all these sprint stages that, that we are going to be seeing throughout this Vuelta Espana. Whilst the bottom two categories are reserved for stage hunters and also the final one, breakaway fodder, mainly for the, the teams that we aren't really going to see too much of at the front of the race. So anyways, the first team we're starting with is Team Quebec Next Hash. And of course, there's just been the recent news that Fabio Aru is retiring. But Bjorn, what do you think of this team here? They have a number of riders of note. They have previous star of Colombia, Sergio Hanau. Fabio Aru, of course, headlines this team and friend of the channel Renard Ran Janse van Rensberg is also here the South African. Yes we have a plethora of former Welter stage winners including Fabio Aru, Sonda Arme and Bertion Lindemann all starting here for Quebec and Extash but this team the way it does and the way it, it will perform all depends on that Sardinian rider Fabio Aru who's looking to have a bit of a resurgence after a really really good Welter Burgos. Very very loud on Twitter everyone's very happy about that but I'm gonna say this is a stage hunting team. I don't think Aru is gonna get a top 10 but I do think he will get a stage win to close out his career. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that front. And yeah, no arguments there on the first team. So one for one. But anyways, next we come to EF Education Nipo, of course, who had a brilliant World Test Spaniard last year with Hugh Carthy winning the Angola Roof stage. And of course, also taking third place on the podium in Madrid that year. But uh, yeah, Vion, they've got a number of strong riders here. Simon Carr, of course, one of the breakthrough riders on Terreno Adriatico. Manus Court Nielsen, of course, who's won the last stage in the World Test Spaniard before. We did think we were going to have Rigoberto Ran here, but that isn't the case anymore. Hugh Carthy is well and truly leading this team. And yeah, what do you think of this team? It definitely looks like they are somewhat putting most of their eggs in the Hugh Carthy basket. Yeah, it looks like Hugh Carthy is going to be the leader in what is uh, a similar setup to the Giro d'Italia team. Instead of the likes of Bethiol, you now have Maunus Court to do that job for him. So this is definitely a really strong all-round team that I would say it's verging between podium contender or top 10, Scott help me decide which one i do think we have a very strong field so i think maybe you're right it is there should be a another category between the two there but i just don't think hugh carthy is gonna finish that high up as he did last year so i'm gonna say top 10 chasers yes well now let's switch our focus over to ineos grenadiers who won the giro d'italia earlier this year with egan bernal they also finished second last year let's not forget with the new olympic road race champion richard carapaz and this is quite the team, isn't it? You've already made a video on it being the one of the lightest teams we've seen in terms of their body weight, but here in terms of their Palmares, it's definitely a heavy team here. Talking about Egan Bernal, Richard Carapaz, Jonathan Narvaez, Tom Pitcock, Salvatore Puccio, Pavel Sivakov, Dylan von Barla, and finally Adam Yates. And goes without saying that this is definitely a super team. They have so many big hitters in Grand Tours as well as Tom Pitcock who is going to have his Grand Tour debut here, and I'm sure he's going to hit the ground running, even maybe on stage one with, with that short prologue. So next we come to the Basque team, Yuskatel Yuskari. It's great to see them back in the professional peloton in a different form, you would have said, since the Sami Sanchez days. But Ewan, we do have uh, a stage winner amongst them. We also have a Cofidis rider, Luis Angel. Mate, who we're so used to seeing with Cofidis, but no longer there, of course. And yeah, where do you think they're going to feature in our ranking? Well, Luis Angel Mate has been up there in the breakaways in the past, contending for that Polka Dot jersey. And also on the team, we have Juan Jose Lobato, who's had a lot of experience with the Uscatel team and with Movistar, back now with the Orange squad. I think this is definitely in that lower bracket, but I don't think they're going to win a stage. I think they're going to be in the breakaways. Definitely trying to get uh, Mate or maybe Ituria into that Polka Dot jersey. Definitely think you're right. And uh, yeah, so we'll put that as a breakaway fodder. Sorry, uh, you should tell you, Scotty. We don't think it's going to be as successful as your previous iteration. But nevertheless, speaking of very successful pro Conti teams, Alpes and Phoenix are coming here, not with a certain someone who could have taken a stage win in every single Grand Tour. That is, of course, Tim Merlier, 
and we've spoken about that before. But in this team, they have got Scott Waits and Jasper Philipsen, who of course has tasted success before in the Vuelta España. And uh, Ewan, do you think this is just set up for uh, Jasper Philipsen to take some sprinter glory? Yeah, this team looks set for Jasper Philipsen. There's no real climbers amongst them. Maybe Jay Vine, but I'm a little bit ignorant to his Palmares. But Edward Plancart, who won at the Alto del Castillo the other week at the Vuelta Burgos, as well as Sacha Modolo, who has been up there in Giro d'Italia sprints in the past. They're all working for that man, Jasper Philipsen, to get him a stage win this year. And it's definitely possible, but I only see them winning stages. I don't think they're going to get a green jersey. I don't think they're going to be anywhere near any other jerseys at the Vuelta. So stage hunting is purpose-built for Alps and Fenix, I'd say. Anyways, our next team is Team Bike Exchange, and they're coming here with a very uncharacteristic, heavy Australian team. And uh, you would have said the biggest name in terms of Australians is Michael Matthews, Lucas Hamilton here as well, Damian Housen, who's very good, Lucas Meskic, who's a prolific sprinter in his own right, and Mikhail Nieve, Nick Schultz, Robert Stannard, and Andrei Seitz, of course, of Kazakhstan. And Ewan, this is a very interesting team. There's no Esteban Chavez that we thought was coming here, but it doesn't look like the Colombian is in this roster. No, this is Team Bike Exchange probably at their most boring that they've been for the past couple of years. It's certainly not a team that's making me excited. Uh, it's one that I think will probably get second and thirds on a couple of stages, but I don't think they're going to get a stage win. The only chance is really going to be Nieva on a mountain stage or maybe Matthews on one of these hillier sprinting days it's not really getting me going and i'm gonna say stage hunting yeah i think stage hunting is probably right he has of course won mountains jerseys in the past and finished top 10 in the vuelta España back in 2019 but yeah he is also 37 so uh that is also a factor to consider even though he still is younger than chris horner when he won it but yeah stage hunting i agree with that and next we come to the team where the vuelta España is going to be starting from and if you haven't checked out ewan's Stage one, make sure to do so. And you and Burgos BH, they're definitely not new to the Vuelta España, but have they really grabbed this chance of coming to a Vuelta España where they're starting from their home region? Well, they've taken a stage win in recent years with Angel Madrazo back in 2019 when we saw that purple jersey uh, on the top of the podium. This year, they're going to come into this race, I think, on the back foot, maybe. We have Yetza Ball for the sprints and Daniel Navarro to go in the breakaways and to maybe get a top five in a mountain stage, but I don't think it's quite going to be the miracle of a stage win uh, like it was back in 2019 and they're going to be relegated to the bottom bracket in my opinion and breakaway fodder is where we're going to see Burgos but I'd like to see them succeed especially when we start off in their hometown outside that glorious cathedral. Nevertheless moving on to a team that we mocked so much that it's almost too much. Cofidis they are coming with one of our favorite riders Guillaume Martin and of course he'll be very confident after his eighth place finish at the Tour de France this year and Ewan they've got both the Harada brothers and Ewan do you think this is going to be a troubling team in in the top 10 potentially. Well, Cofidis are a team that's historically been quite Spanish. They sponsor the Vuelta España as well. So this is always a big sponsor goal. They've even worn the red jersey in the past couple of years with Nicola Ede, alongside some stage wins from Jesus Herrada as well as Nasser Buoni. So Cofidis really do like the Walter Espana and I could see some chances here maybe from Herada again maybe Guillaume Martin or maybe even Remy Rochaz in the mountains but I am going to say breakaway again Guillaume Martin I don't think is gonna get a win at all and it hurts me saying that because I'm a big fan you're saying breakaway fodder yeah what do you say I would say top 10 chasers have you seen that team yeah Guillaume Martin and who and her, the Harada brothers to help him okay huh? um there's no Anthony Perez, but we, we we can split the different stage hunting. I'll accept that. Okay, fine. <laughs> Our first disagreement. Anyways, now we come to a team that we're both big fans of, and they've had a lot of bad luck along the way, but consequently a lot of good luck as well after that bad luck. And that is Bahrain Victorious, who have definitely been victorious this year, They're showing very strong form at both the Giro d'Italia and the Tour de France. And they are coming here with the recent winner of the Vuelta Burgos, Miguel Landa, and of course also the surprise second place finisher at the Giro d'Italia, Damiano Caruso, with Jack Haig, who unfortunately crashed at the Tour de France, and Gino Madère, of course, a stage winner in the Giro d'Italia, and Marc Padon, of course, a two-time stage winner at the Créteum du Dauphiné, but unfortunately wasn't let into that squad, and Wout Pools as well, who has finished sixth at last year's Vuelta España, and of course, friend of the channel, Jan Tratnik, rounds out that team with Yukiya Arashiro, the very popular Japanese rider. Yeah, well, this is a super team. 
I yeah, think we come into this with such a good setup where we've got Mikel Landa, we've got Damiana Caruso, two guys who've finished on the podium of the Giro d'Italia in the past. Don't forget Gino Meda, Jack Haig as well. Two guys who could probably get a top 10 on their own if they try to. And then we've neglected to talk about the wild card, Mark Padun, who people love to pretend is a, is a podium contender already. He's not, but he's a very, very good climber on his day. And, and Bahrain victorious, they are a team that I can see stopping Yumbo Visma. In your screen ideas, it could be a whole calamity within them, but Bahrain seemed to be all in for Lander. And if if they can do that, well, we could finally see Ineos Grenadiers or Jumbo Visma toppled. So anyway, speaking of teams with bad luck this year, we've got Groupama FDJ up next. Of course, uh, they didn't quite get the top 10 result that they wanted with David Goudou after a very unfortunate moment too. And Arnaud Demar, who of course, who dominated the Giro d'Italia last year, didn't have a good Tour de France this year. But anyways, t- uh, it looks like it is Arnaud Dumas who is their principal rider. And what do you think of this team? This is a team that are built all for the sprints. We have Arnaud Dumas, of course, leading them out with Jacopo Guarnieri, who's here after crashing out of the Tour de France. Don't forget also uh, Ramon Sinkeldam, Olivier Legac, and also Tobias Ludwigsson for the time trials in this race. So it's a good sprinting team. Will Arnaud Dumas be able to topple Fabio Jakobsen or Jasper Philipsen? That is another question that needs to be answered because he hasn't done so this year. So so far and if they're looking for another person for a stage maybe Rudy Mola but I'm struggling to put them in stage hunting because I don't know if their mars going to be there but Scott what do you think I think it's a bit harsh I definitely think they're going to be stage hunting <laughs> okay then like let's do that maybe I'm just very critical because I wanted to see either Thibaut Pino or David Gaudu here and neither of them are even Attila Valter I think would have been a good addition to the squad but next we've got another interesting team that have been very active in the transfer market and if you've been following us serious you will have seen that a lot of riders have gone in and out including a certain Peter Sagan but nevertheless uh, Bora Hansgrove there's a lot of riders in there that you have a strong liking to uh, Maximilian Schachmann of course the two-time Paris Nice winner is there anyone who really catches your eye Felix Groschak now of course took a stage win last year at the Welta Burgos and seemed very strong at this part of the season. Yeah, uh, Gorshatner was actually riding very well last year at the Welta Espana, let's not forget. But this Bora team, it's packed with big names. Uh, not necessarily the massive hitters you'd think, but it's a really solid team. Looking at Gorshatner, Maximilian Schachmann, and I'm intrigued to see what Palza and also Ben Zihoff can do. They're two transition road riders. Palza from the triathlon and Ben Zihoff is a mountain biker. So it's going to be interesting to see how they go over this three weeks, as well as their sprinting field. Martin Lass of Estonia is riding here, big favorite of mine and pro cycling manager, as well as Jordi Meus from Belgium, who's been building up his season quite consistently to this point. So this is a tough one between top 10 chases or stage hunting, because I think they're a stage hunting team, but I feel bad putting them this low down on the ranking because their team strength is higher than, than a pure stage hunting squad. I mean, this is probably a bit critical of the tiers that we have, and maybe we should have made them a bit more. But uh, yeah, well, it's it's fine being a stage hunting team. So I think, yeah, stage hunting. I just can't see Maximilian Schachmann finishing top 10 in the GC. That's fair. He's never done it before. Anyways, now we come to one of the teams that is one of our favorites. Of course, we've just heard news that Miguel Angel Lopez has just extended his contract. But nevertheless, the calamity that is movie star coming here with the Netflix squad, we might think. I'm not sure. But yeah, headlining this team, you would have thought was last year's fifth place finisher, Enrique Mas. Alejandro Valverde is here. Carlos Verona, Jose Rojas, Nelson Oliveira, Johan Jacobs as well, and Imalo Eveti as well, including Miguel Angel Lopez, as I don't think I mentioned. But yeah, Ewan, as we've said before, if it doesn't fail the first time, try it again until it works. And that seems to be what they're trying to do here with so many leaders. I don't think it's going to work this time. I'll put that one out there. Enric Mas, the rider from Menorca, I think is probably their strongest pick in terms of GC. I think a third place is the very maximum he can hope for. But this squad is just, it's so confusing. I don't understand what my Movistar do this every year because they haven't won a Grand Tour in a very long time. It just confuses me. You have Enric Mas, you have Miguel Angel Lopez, as well as Alejandro Barberde, who are all coming to this race to try and be leaders or do whatever they want to do. And... It's going to harm whoever's highest in GC because they have so many options and so many plans. So I think it is podium contender, but I'm just tired of Movistar existing in terms of a team. I think they either need a complete structural uh, reshuffle or just new sponsors. to switch things up. Yeah, let's let's hope they can get uh, themselves together. But of course, Alejandro Valverde 
Enrique Mas and Miguel Angel Lopez, they have all finished on the podium in the Vuelta España. So hopefully they can do something this year. But nevertheless, speaking of teams that we haven't really put that much faith in, Intermarché, Wanty Group Gobert, of course, they did absolutely amazing with that tackle Van der Horn win in the Giro d'Italia. But Louis Minkies, of course, a former top 10 finisher at the Vuelta España and twice finishing eighth at the Tour de France. His 10th place finish at the Vuelta España was, of course, six years ago now. And uh, yeah, I don't know if if the South African will have the form here. Of course, he was the highest placed African in the Tour de France, finishing 14th this year. But Jürgen, uh, what do you think of this team ride? Teremeyer is here as well, the Estonian premium super talent in his own right. Did he win a Welta stage? No, Ryan Tarama actually won a Giro stage. That was the stage when Nibali took the, the pink jersey back in 2016. However... I don't oh, think right. 2011. Time. He did. 2011. Oh, oh. 2011. Booyah. That's and before Bo- my time. Though. And Burgos won in 2015. That's so good in that take. So anyways, Ewan, what do you think of this team? And uh, yeah, who is in the team as well? It's a very international team to say the least. Well, this is Antimarche. They're a team sponsored by a Belgian supermarket and also a Belgian construction company. They have one Belgian here. His name is Kevin von Melsen. But the other ones we have, Reint Arnemes. Simone Petili, Ricardo Minali, Wesley Crader, Jon Hirtz, as well as Ot Christian Eiking and Louis Menkes. This team is not really screaming top 10. I think it's screaming top 25. And I think that means it's going to have to go to the bottom. They don't have Pascal on. They don't have Danny von Poppel. They don't have the exciting riders, but maybe next year they'll come back with all the riders that, that they seem to be sweeping up this year in, in the transfer market. And we'll see Alexander Kristoff at the Welter. Do you not think they could potentially be stage hunting this team with the likes of Ryan Tyrema? Okay, it's been a while since he's won stages in the Grand Tour, but Lou Menkes could challenge as well. Okay, I don't think Lou Menkes is going to challenge the top 10, but yeah, breakaway fodder or is it stage hunting? I'll give you the call this time. Okay. So, so we're in a fictional breakaway at La Vuelta. And you have Louis Mainkies up here with maybe Felix Gorschardner or the likes of uh, Geoffrey Duchamp in a breakaway. Who's going to win? It's not going to be Louis Mainkies. I'm sorry. He's going to be breakaway. And he's going to finish second or third on some stages from the breakaway, but not win. And not come anywhere near top 10. Maybe 15th. Oh, well. So there we go. Breakaway fodder. And now we come to... Well, I one of Ewan's favorite teams, but of course it isn't. He has, of course, spoken a lot about them, but not in good publicity. And that is Israel's startup nation. And uh, yeah, of course, Dan Martin was absolutely electric at last year's edition. They are coming with two Israeli riders, and it looks like they're headed up by Setban Mark, uh, of course, a previous podium finisher at the Paru Bay, and Ronde van Vlaanderen as well. And then a recent Danish champion, Mesviot Smit, who didn't go to the Tour de France, and David Chimolai as well, who did very good in the Giro d'Italia. And Ewan, not quite the Dan Martin team that we had last year. Yeah, no for him either. You know what this team is... Interesting, to say the least. They're a team that have Chris Room, Dan Martin, Michael Woods, these these pretty heavy hitters. Uh, maybe even the likes of Ugo Ofstetter and so forth to come in as well. They're not here. They're not here at all. Instead, we have Sebastian Berwick and James Piccoli. That's cool. It's not even like this team is, is breaking the World Tour. This is a pro-continental team at a pro-continental race. This should not be a World Tour team's Grand Tour st- lineup they have better riders to choose from and yet they've still chosen a team which which focuses on um target regions of their financier sylvan adams of which four of this eight seem to feature from nevertheless it's not a team we're gonna see an awful lot of i'd love to see sefa marka finally win a grand tour stage but it's not gonna happen and i think it's gonna be breakaway fodder full stop period point blank t yeah i i agree with you and uh even though massfield smith did uh well by winning a stage in train adriatico i don't think He's going to be taking a stage win, unfortunately. But nevertheless, we're coming to another French team. And as it's a French team, I'll hand over to you in here. It is, of course, the, the team that were injected with a lot of money from the automotive company Citroën. And you and AG2R Citroën team here. And yeah, Jeffrey Bouchard. Yeah, well, as you said, Citroën coming in here after what was a fabulous Giro, a very good Tour de France. And now... They're going to come into the Vuelta with a different team. We have Geoffrey Bouchard. We have Lilian Calamajan, who's won a stage at La Vuelta in the past. Alongside Clément Champussin, who got a couple of top tens last year. Michael Cherel, Stan de Wolf, Nicolas Prodom, as well as Damien Thuzet and Clément Venturini, who is 
a cyclocross rider for France. So this is a packed team with a lot of different talents. It's definitely going to be in the breakaway. They might get a stage win, but Joffrey Bouchard has been quite open about his transition to becoming a Grand Tour contender in the French press. So... I think Geoffrey Bouchard has the credentials maybe to get a top 10 without people thinking about it. If you saw the way he rode at the Gira and at Burgos last week, Bouchard could be kissing the fringes of top 10. But at the moment, I'm going to have to say stage hunting. I mean, ninth place finish at the Vuelta Burgos recently for Bouchard. So uh, we can't put everyone in stage hunting either. So I think we should put them in top 10 just for the, so we don't get all of them in stage hunting. I basically took what you said and made it more favorable. You went against yourself. But nevertheless, another team that probably won't feature that high up, Cara Rual. And Ewan, this is another pro continental team. Is there any riders who are kind of catching your eyes? And just to let everyone know, it is not Cepeda that we were talking about in the Giro d'Italia. It is someone related to him, though. Yes, it's the other Jefferson Cepeda. And this one is probably not as strong as the uh, the one that writes for Androni and for Gianni Savio's team. Instead, this uh, this Cepeda is still good, but he's not quite on that level. But we do have John Adberasturi, the sprinter from the Basque Country, who won a stage at the Tour of Slovenia, which we covered here on the channel. And I think that this team is going to be in the breakaways. I don't think they're going to get a stage at all. And the only times we'll be talking about them is when they bag a couple of top fives with a better story and being in the breakaway over the Alto del Cuyo somewhere in Spain. So nevertheless, now we're coming to one of the most hottest teams in, well, most seasons since 2011. And that is, of course, the Quick Quickstep. They are coming with the comeback kid that is Fabio Jakobsen. Adria Banjoli is here as well. Josef Schoenig, James Knox, Florian Seneschal, Stenek Stiva, Bert van Lerbergen, and Mario van Sevenent, of course, one of UN's favorite riders. And Ewan, what do you think of this team? Fabio Jakobsen is a great story having him back. He, of course, took two stage wins in the 2019 World Dice Spania. I think Jakobsen is going to take a stage this year. When in the race, I don't know, but it will happen in my head because we have Bert von Leiberg here, we have Seneschal, we have Ginek Stieber all here. Mauri von Sevenant, isn't that quite the name? He's going to win a stage as well, I think. He is a phenomenal rider, but I don't think he quite has what it takes to stay there in the three-week Grand Tour to get a top 10 in the end. But if he can evoke the spirit they had last year in the Spring Classics, and this year as well, he rode very well at the Spring Classics. I think Maudi von Sabenant is someone you should keep your eyes on. James Knox as well could be getting close to top 10 like he was in 2019, but we'll have to wait and see. This is not necessarily the kind of quick steps crown jewel team, but we could lead this Vuelta España with potentially five stage wins from them. I'm thinking maybe about Jakobsen combined with Maudi von Sabenant, maybe James Knox, maybe even... Andrea Bayoli, he also could win a stage uh, somewhere in this race as well. So anyway, it's going from one Belgian team to another. And this is, of course, Lotto Sudal not coming here with Caleb Ewan, as we did think. They are somewhat headed up by Andreas Korn, who took a Walter Catalunya stage win this year. They also have Matthew Holmes, of course, of the UK, who, of course, dethroned Richie Port somewhat of his Wollonga crown at last year's tour down under. And of course, Han van Hauken as well, who, of course, was a headline in some capacity at the Giro d'Italia as well in the early weeks. What do you think of this team? And uh, it's a shame we don't have a Caleb Ewan here. Well, I think I'm going to forget about Lotus Sudel for the next three weeks. And I'm fine with this. They have Andreas Kohn here, who I think is actually going to have quite a big breakthrough ride here. He's already taken two World Tour stages this year. Don't forget, he had a Tour of Suisse stage awarded to him after Rui Costa was relegated. So uh, he is someone that you need to keep your eye on. Steph Kras has let me down ever since he left the junior category. And uh, Hannah von Hauke has also let me down ever since he wore the white jersey at last year's Giro. So I don't know how this is going to go. I think it is really all dependent on what Andreas Korn can do. Maybe he can evoke the spirits of Tim Wellens on a hilly day and take a stage there. Uh, nevertheless, uh, our GC is quite thin at the top, but the next team definitely are going to be troubling that heavier end of our little spectrum here. And that is Astana Premier Tech, of course, who seem like they're just losing everyone in the transfer market. One of which is the rider who's going to be leading them into this, his second World to España, being the leader for Astana. That is Alexander Blazov. And... You and do you think he has a strong enough team? Basically, it's a Russian leading a Spanish team here under a Kazakh flag. Well, I have no idea what's happening with Astana internally. If you've been keeping up with the headlines, you'll know that Premier Tech, the Canadian company that co-sponsors the team, have left. Vinokurov apparently left, then rejoined. And now we're in a point of the transfer market where all their big riders are under threat and they're not making any big signings 
at all this season. It seems like a very bizarre time for us and, and all of their riders will be battling it out for a contract. So they're going to want a good result because of this whole uncertainty. We have Alexander Vlasov as leader. He's going to Bora, by the way, for 2022. He's not going to get on the podium. I'll say that now. I think he's going to finish within top 10 very comfortably, but I don't think he's going to quite finish on the podium. The judo route was almost perfectly suited to him and he didn't make it there. So I don't think the Walter is going to quite work in his favor this year. Elsewhere, we have Alex Adamburu, who's been disappointing this year at the Tour de France, alongside Omar Fraile, who yet again was up there in the breakaways, but didn't finish off the job. Gorka and Yoni Zagire. Yoni Zagire, of course, won a stage last year. You Yuri Natarov of Kazakhstan, who I've never heard of, alongside Oscar Rodriguez, who won a stage at the 2018 edition, and Luis Leon Sanchez, who's won Grand Tour stages in the past, a very, very good lieutenant. But this is going to be a podium contender or a top 10. Top 10, I think, is the most safe, Scott. Do you agree? Yeah, well, part of me wants him to finish on the podium, but then you think back that we have Ineos Grandes and another team that we haven't spoken about yet to come. So I just don't see it happening. There's too many strong riders. So potentially, yeah, maybe he can creep into the top five. And when you think about the Giro, they did, the Miguelanda wasn't there. There wasn't a Carapaz as well. So yeah, I think it's safe to say that that's probably going to be it. But nevertheless, speaking of podiums, a uh, rider who has finished on the podium, not here though, but in the Tour de France, that is Roman Bardet. He was at that Giro d'Italia earlier in the year. Coming here with Team DSM and Ewan, you are, of course, our DSM slash Sunweb fanboy. And uh, what do you think of this team? I mean, in the preview, I said it was a brilliant team. But now that Roman Balde had back problems uh, on the final stages of the Vuelta Burgos, I'm a little bit scared. So we have Roman Balde, Thayman Aronsman, Alberto Dainese, Nico Dentz, alongside Chad Hager, Chris Hamilton, Michael Stora, and Martin Tusfeld. Tusfeld is leaving the team this year. We know that. He'll be fighting for a new contract, we believe. I had big expectations for him to work here, but I don't know if that's quite going to work out. It looks like a good GC team on paper. DSM them usually do quite well when the team is very solid, a bit like their Geo squad last year. This has given me similar energy. And I would say this is a top 10 chasing team, maybe with Roman Balde, but I also think Michael Stora could have a breakthrough ride following his strong Tour de l'Ain earlier this year when he was popping his way all over the Grand Colombier and the other climbs of that part of France. So Team DSM could definitely do well. Dainese is bound for a podium at some point in a sprint. I think that's a very fair assessment. But now, anyways, we're coming to the big guns and uh, we almost don't have to say anything about this team. It is, of course, the defending champions with Primoz Roglic. He's looking to do a hat-trick or complete the hat-trick of Vuelta Espana wins and I'm just going to put them in super team. Yeah, I don't think we need to say anything. Primus Roglic, Sepp Kuss, his very loyal lieutenant here as well, Steven Kruijswijk, Robert Hessing, of course, both of those two Dutchmen had very unfortunate Tour de France. Nathan Van Hoydijk here as well. And yeah, you, there's not much to say about this team other than they'll probably take this with those two time trials as well, favoring the Olympic champion, Primus Roglic. Well, Roglic could really lead this one from start to finish if he wins Saturday's time trial. I assume after Pico Blanco is well on stage three, he'll still be in the jersey and, and keep it to Santiago de Compostela. So I think that Roglic is certainly in a good position. He's got Kuss, Casing, and also Bauman to help them in the mountains. Those are very, very good lieutenants. Bauman was just off of a top 10 at the Giro. So it's going to be a really strong squad. And I think this is going to be the retribution ride at a Grand Tour and the Yumbo Visma show can begin once again after what was a difficult Tour de France for them. They managed to get a lot out of it, but it wasn't quite the typical Yumbo Visma ride that we've seen over the past two or so years. So there we go. The boys in yellow and black are going to be back on top. So anyways, one team that had a bit of bad luck as well in a Grand Tour, it wasn't the Tour de France, it was the Giro d'Italia and Trexler Fredo, of course, have that Italian flair. They have got Nibli here not Vincenzo, the other Nibli. In terms of other two Italians that they also have is Giulio Ciccone and Gianluca Brambilla. And of course, Giulio Ciccone, he was targeting the GC in the Giro d'Italia, but couldn't quite finish that. Had a lot of bad luck and in a crash. And Ewan, do you think this is a very exciting team that we got here? Well, I love Ciccone. He's a brilliant rider. I think he really adds something. He attacks all the time. I don't think he necessarily cares about GC. He just wants to get every result he can. And I think he could get into top 10, but I'd love to see him take some stage wins. This is a team that really could help him get into that position. Quinn Simmons is fabulous on the flat and rolling terrains. We know Antonio Nibli is actually a decent mountain rider on his day. Alongside Gianluca Brambilla, who's won a welter stage in the past. Kenny Alessandro, who has also won welter stages at the Angliru. And a rider who I think is going to have a breakout ride, Juan Pedro Lopez of Spain, who's 24 years old, starting for Trek Zegafredo. I think this is a top 10, but 
I'm a little bit hasty to say so because I don't know what Chikane is going to do. He had a brilliant first week of the judo. And in fact, he was the second best rider on the mountains in the first week, but it all fell off really later on after Cortino Dempezzo and so forth. And then that, sadly that crashed at the Paso San Valentino. So We'll have to wait and see what Chikone can do. But Trek Zegafredo could certainly get a top 10. But anyways, now we come to the final team and how fitting that is the team that finished first, not at the Vuelta España last year, but of course the Tour de France in the last two seasons. And that is the Pogles UAE team Emirates. And Ewan, there is a podium finisher amongst this team in the Vuelta España. And that is the superstar. That is Rafa Micah. Yeah, I think this is a really strong, solid squad. Uh, don't just look at Micah. Also look at De La Cruz, who's had a good ride in Grand Tours in the past. Joe Dombrowski's here after his win at Sestola early this year. Very emotional win. Ryan Gibbons, as well as uh, Juan Sebastián Molano, who's just been winning some stages at Burgos as well. But let's not forget Trentin and Poland, who will be lining up. It's a very well-balanced squad. He'll be up there we'll see them a lot i think either dela cruz or micah will get top 10 which one i don't know but they will be there and will be present so top 10 chases for sure so yeah that's basically it for our little video here and now you have the full grid uh make sure to let us know down below what you think of not only our order but also if you think we should have changed the categories a bit i think uh, i started to notice that when we were getting the blind spots between a certain of the categories but yeah nevertheless it's going to be a very exciting web to España. make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the videos we are doing on the welter and of course also check out our transfer season as as well as we've also alluded to but yeah that's basically it and thank you for watching and have a nice day